tell you everything you need to know about what's going on behind the scenes at the White House. Joining me now to help break it down is John McWhorter, professor of linguistics at Columbia University and the author of, say it together, Words on the Move. move. So all we, a good book. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. So all week we've heard uh, Team Trump speaking about the president and his actions. I want to start with the vice president and the EPA chief in the Rose Garden. Listen. Thanks to President Trump's leadership, American businesses are growing again. Thanks to President Donald Trump, America is back. Thank you, Mr. President. Your decision today to exit the Paris Accord reflects your unflinching commitment to put America first. And by exiting, you're fulfilling yet one more campaign promise to the American people. Please know that I'm thankful for your fortitude, your courage, and your steadfastness as you serve and lead our country. What do you think? <laughs> that looked like some 19th century or, or better 9th century ritual. It's absolutely absurd, but think about it this way. Imagine if a 12-year-old were fashioning policies, and then there's this battery of people who are assigned to interpret his policies for the public. Now, there have always been this battery of people for other presidents who were real presidents, and so we have this ritual that policy is set, and either because it's complicated or because everybody wants to figure out how politics is being played, you have these people whose job it is to ask questions to try to bring these things out. Well, you keep things going. And so, you, sitcoms used to have theme songs. They don't as much now. Right. There was no reason for a sitcom really to have a theme song, and so we figured out that it doesn't need it. In the same way, we might not really need this business of these press briefings at this point because the policies that are coming from this president are almost invariably under considered not to mention mean-spirited poppycock therefore why do you need people to ask questions about it as if there's any there there I think that there shouldn't be any briefings at all I have to say, take issue with something you said you said real presidents you're saying he's not a real president Yes, I'm putting forth the unusual insight, unprecedented, that this person, of course, he was elected president. Right. But I mean, in terms of what he we assume, he doesn't act presidential. He doesn't saying. act presidential. He isn't giving thought to the presidency the way we would expect. And therefore, the policies don't make sense. They aren't well thought out. They don't deserve, no, they can't be subjected to analysis the way previous presidencies' policies could. So we need to just let it go. These things should be put in writing and then people should discuss them. To have somebody like Sean Spicer assigned to explain what the policies are, to justify something that almost always has and no moral were... justification, it's really, it's cruel to him, and it makes no logical sense. It's okay, so, and time. the people around him, like, like Scott Pruitt and like the Vice President, same thing, you, you, don't, need, you, you don't think there needs to be an announcement? <laughs> All of this, it looks so ritual for the simple reason that there's nothing good to say. Okay. Imagine being in that position. Okay, let's, let's start with, uh, let's talk about the statement from, uh, this is from Hope Hicks, Director of Strategic Communications. President Trump has a magnetic personality and exudes positive energy, which is infectious to those around him. He has an unparalleled ability to communicate with people, whether he is speaking to a room of three or an arena of 30,000. He has built great relationships throughout his life and treats everyone with respect. He is brilliant, with a great sense of humor and an amazing ability to make people feel special and aspire to be more and even more than even they thought possible. This is fantasy. Is he writing his own statements or? <laughs> he wouldn't be capable of writing anything that articulate. But the point is that he is about as charismatic as a kitchen cabinet. And she understands that. She's just making something up because there's absolutely no basis in reality to work from. And I think that's very sad for her. She's not even thinking about him when she writes that. It's actually gotten to that point. What do you think she's thinking about? What will make him happy or what will... Yeah. Or does it even matter anymore? She's what? working for her boss, and I guess she's doing something which at least has the form of her doing her job so that she yeah. can look qualified to do the next one. Equally as striking, though, is what his team was able to say or, or maybe not able to say about whether the president believes in climate change. Watch this. What does the president actually believe about climate change? Does he still believe it's a hoax? Um, could you clarify that since apparently nobody else in the White House can't? Yeah, I have not had an opportunity to have that discussion. 
Does the president believe climate change is a hoax? This is not about whether climate change is occurring or not. Does he believe global warming is a hoax? He believes in clean air, clean water, a clean environment. And I'll ask you one more time. Does he believe global warming is a hoax? You Does should he ask him that. <laughs> so, and then we have this barrage of tweets of, you know, of course he's tweeted about it, we can put that up. Why do you think no one wants to answer this question? <laughs> For the simple reason that climate change is relatively complex and you have to read both sides. Or so these days, I think it's at the point where there's one side whose justifications you need to read. You need to concentrate. And that's not something that he does. And so I think that his position on climate change is roughly that... Climate change policies were something that the previous administration liked, and so therefore he doesn't, because life is always about what went on when he was in sandboxes when he was a child. And so that leaves his handlers to not even be able to tell us how the president feels about one of the most pressing issues facing humankind today. That's what I mean by not a real president. I don't mean that the Electoral College didn't do its unfortunate job. I mean this man isn't acting like what the leader of a nation is supposed to act like. The leader of uh, the French nation, uh, Macron, has been in office for just a few weeks, and he's quickly becoming the one person who is willing uh, to stand up to uh, President Trump. Uh, and, and he had some really harsh words about him pulling out of the Paris Accord. Watch this. To all scientists, engineers, entrepreneurs, responsible citizens who were disappointed by the decision of the President of the United States, I want to say that they will find in France a second homeland. I call on them, come and work here with us, to work together on concrete solutions for our climate. He also tweeted this, he put it up as a sharp response, also in English using his own slogan, slogan against him. What's your take on it? Zid, make the planet great again. So he's a statesman, he is a person who's thinking, and he has focus. And it's really unfortunate to contrast that with, you know, it really gets me, this is a little bit off script, but there are people who are working for this man, there are people who are writing about this man in his favor. There are Republicans who are gonna be writing for the next three and a half years having to pretend that any of this is justifiable and makes sense. It's so sad to see somebody from across the pond who can write about this straight. And then to think about any intelligent person here who has to spend time pretending that this man is capable of rubbing a noun and a verb together. I think it's really sad. Yeah. Well, if you listen to Macron, who is English is not his first language, right? What do you think his grasp of the English language? <laughs> is it better than our president? Well, you know, I mean, it would be a cheap shot to say, I'll bet Trump doesn't speak French. But then again, English, for better or for worse, is the closest thing that the world has to an international language. And so it's more likely that Macron would speak English. And of course, his English is, let's say, thriftier and tidier than the spoken English of Trump. But then again, people who are taught English as a second language often are not taught the bar stool version. But certainly, I have never listened to Macron in French. Boy, that sounds pretentious. But I'm sure that when he speaks to the French public, he speaks in a formal kind of French and a French that requires forethought. Yeah. That's different from a certain other president. The former FBI Director James Comey is going to testify publicly next Thursday. Talk about the definition of words matter. Uh, it's shaping up to be one of the most important days in recent American history. What will you be listening for? In that testimony, I will be listening for Comey to explain how there's been this disagreement between him and the president and to make it clear in terms of words mattering that what the president said corresponded to facts that are extremely damning to his account, I mean the president's account, of what's been going on. I think that the president tends to think you can just kind of spew, I mean that's, you know, kofefe, that you're sitting here tweeting and you fall asleep while you're writing the word coverage and you actually send it and then tease everybody the next day. He thinks that words don't matter because they don't when you're sitting on a bar stool or when you're bouncing your grandchild on your knee. But words do matter. You can never say an unmonitored word. You're using language in a completely different way when you're president, except roughly when you're in the bathroom. Trump doesn't understand that, and I would hope that as we iron out what's going on between him and Comey, 
that that becomes clearer because and frankly I'm a little biased I think that when we do understand what went on between him and Comey it might be the beginning of even the Republicans realizing that we need to reconsider whether this man should be in the Oval Office at all. We'll is, see. It, is it surprising to you that uh, really smart people he says and the people around him will say that really part smart people just don't understand the words he's using so, <laughs> and I know some really and you're a linguist and I'm sure you don't understand especially is that is that the definition of coffee? No, I don't know. <laughs> that that doesn't work. I mean on the one hand if you take a written transcription of his babbling you read it in writing and it looks like a Martian said it or somebody who learned English last week but the truth is context means a lot right. and he is coherent.